So I've sanded it all up, just got a bit of linseed oil here. I'm just going to apply that with a tissue because I'm not brave enough to put it on my hands. And we get this kind of dark, kind of grey, brownie thing. The, yeah, that'll do. Don't mind that at all. It's a different finish than what I was expecting, but sure, it'll do. It's on there now, so can't do much about it. Now we're just going to wait for a bit for this to soak in and then we'll apply a little bit more then we'll sand it down with some incredibly high grit stuff then it'll be done and then we can show off the knife. So we've got this one knife pretty much as high as we're going to go on our stones and now would be the time where I'd normally strop it on my leather strop, that's, uh, that's this ornate piece of carpentry here, it's beautiful, but I'm not going to do that today for a very specific reason because I've got something else that will hopefully help me do it in the same way but faster which means I have to spend less time overall sharpening because sharpening is one of those arduous processes you don't like doing as a knife maker. It's it's got to be it's got to be done because you, you want to have a sharp knife, but you don't have to spend hours and hours on a stone doing that and then on a strop doing that. It's just oh <laughs> years of my life gone to that. So we're going to move over to our grinder and we're going to be using some, some really cool stuff. I'll, I'll show you in a sec. So guys, we've got this here MDF wheel. Um, I might show how I made it, but it's not massively hard. I just cut a circle of MDF out, trued it up with a chisel braced on my workbench here just to make it really circular. Chuck some buffing compound on it, and that is that's pretty much it. It's it's not a hell of a lot more than that. It's just kind of a means of stropping that's faster than. All of the things I would normally use, like leather, wood, all of that, it's it's just faster. Might be more accurate to use um, a leather strop, but this doesn't have to be massively accurate because it's only a little knife for me, myself, and I, you know. So, yep, yeah, let's just crack on and switch this bad boy on, and I'll show you how to use it. Got our knife. Hopefully, it's pretty sharp, um, and we're just gonna see if we can go through some paper, you know. Oh, 
Okay, that wasn't one. That one wasn't particularly good. Get you. Right. Well, it's pretty sharp. I think we can agree on that. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with the knife. Let's see if we can get some nice close ups. That is the spine. Nice and shiny, really nice tight fit on those scales, I'm really happy how they came out, they came, I thought there'd be gaps or something like that that I have to fill, but actually turned out quite nice, there's no gaps whatsoever in that, which is really nice, all the pins, ground flush, even though I didn't, um, I didn't, um, epoxy them, I just pinned them, so they're bigger than they originally were, and then just ground them down, and they'd already expanded in the, um, scale material which was really nice so I had a nice flush thing rather than lumps and bumps which is something you typically get when you peen them and same with the lanyard hole um, that's peened, well I say peened um, uh, I've expanded it inside its hole so it's not coming out and then just ground it down flush so that's nice and ground the handle material, it's some kind of synthetic micarta type layered thing, it's kind of fibrous, it's um, it's quite nice though. Uh, it sands down and then um, linseed oil is quite nice, it goes quite dark, it was quite light before, now it's quite dark though, which is nice. The kind of overall forge looks quite nice, this, this is nice, I wish it had done that all the way up, but it didn't, so I'll just deal with it. And the bevels came out okay, I'm not 100% happy with them, but um, it could have been a hell of a lot worse, is all I'm going to say. And um, I think it's because my inexperience with grinding with belts, I don't do it very often, I tend to file most of my things. But this time I'm trying to move towards belts and um, using my contact wheel less, using my abrasive contact wheel, I'm trying to use belts more, like a, an actual knife maker. But yeah, it's all right, it'll cut paper, as you can see, which is quite nice. And it we've proved it holds an edge and that uh, it's hard. We did that earlier. We've proved it can do that, which is nice. It's always nice when you put a lot of work into something and it actually comes out as you wanted it. Pretty soon, though. This is uh, nothing really to do with the video. I'm going to apologise first for not uploading for a while. I did some kind of... I, I added a bit of a lapse in... Um, content creation because I went on holiday, apologies, and um, um, yeah so I had to stop making videos for a bit because I had none in the pipeline, then I decided right I just got to make a video reasonably quick and try and get one out, it wasn't of great quality to be honest and nothing to do with knife making, it was just that draw bit grum grinding thing, it wasn't great, I'm, I'm sorry about that, uh, I just felt like I needed to get a video out. So, um, yeah, um, I've been trying to get a few more out, I've been trying to finish this Kukri that I've been working on for about 14 years now, I needed to get this done, I've got a few other knives coming out, I'm going to be doing an acid etching tutorial hopefully soon, um, and also, kind of some big-ish news, um, I'm going to move on and make some kind of Damascus knife. Because um, soon I'm going to be making a folding knife for um, one of my college projects, I believe. I believe it's going to be a folding knife anyway, uh, because my college is nice like that. So I'm going to try and make it at Damascus, and so I'm going to buy some Damascus, we're going to have a play with it, see how it works out, then I'll make this folding knife type thing. But I want to have a play with it first before I get to making something as complicated as a, a folding knife. So, um, just kind of keep in mind that we'll be doing some Damascus stuff and it's just like a little update type thing. Uh, and that's pretty cool. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this poorly put together video. I'm sorry about the uh, 
the overall quality. I'm just having a go at forging. It didn't go particularly well, but it could have gone a hell of a lot worse. So, thanks for doing this with me. Um, I hope you guys have a good day, and do all that like, subscribe, comment stuff, that thing your normal YouTubers say. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, Knife Scalor here, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video compared to what I normally do knife making wise. Normally I'm more of a grinding guy, so I'll sit here with my angle grinder, I'll get a long sheet of metal and I'll cut bits off of it into a shape I want, then I'll grind it from there. Today we're going to be hammering metal. I haven't really done a lot of that, and uh, also it's my birthday today, so uh, I got a load of cool stuff. Um, which can help me do the knife making. So I got that new hammer over there. I got, you know, some gloves. I'm using the anvil I built in the last video. Got some other cool stuff that I might use later on. So I've got my, got some ferric chloride here for etching. And uh, yeah, I've, I've also got a brand new um, caliper set as well. It's here, at, uh, this is a, um, a digital set. So hopefully that'd be a little better for when I wanna do some more accurate stuff so I'm just gonna wait for the forge to finish heating up then let's start hammering Guys, as you can see, I've actually overheated the steel and bits of it are uh, broken off. So, that's the first, that's the learning curve. <laughs> Don't overheat your steel. Uh, make sure you keep an eye on how hot it's getting. My first time kind of doing this, so I'm not too annoyed with myself, but yeah, so just kind of keep hitting on it until you get a shape you want, sort of. And make sure you don't, don't ever pick hot steel up. That's a bad idea. I don't know why I did that. Um, yeah, so just keep an eye on what your steel's doing, don't just let it heat up and do nothing about it. So I'm going to keep having a go at this and we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. Well, I'm done forging the tip anyway. Um, I'm quite annoyed because there's uh, these kind of ridges that I'm pretty sure were caused by me trying to flatten it, flatten it out, kind of a corkscrew type effect on the steel. So I've tried to kind of counteract that. I've come up with these ridges though, so I might just take it Back, hammer it a few times, see if that fixes it. Um, I like my new forging hammer, that's working really well. Um, I might even as well try dipping the hammer in water and just blast off some of the scale. Um, maybe I'll do that, maybe I won't. Uh, maybe I'll try and forge the tang in a minute. Um, not sure I'm gonna do that, I'll just kind of give it a go and see what I can come up with, but yeah, other than that, um, I'm really enjoying it so far, which is the idea. I think the bit of steel got about that much longer as well. It's just got about yay much longer, which is pretty interesting. But um, yeah, I'm done with forging the tip anyway, and I'll move on to forging the tang. I've changed my mind um, just quickly, just before I forge the bevels in, I'm going to put it through a thermal cycling. Uh, basically, all I'm doing is putting it in the forge and turning the forge off and letting it cool down. This will bring it down so that it's really, really soft. And, um, well, I don't know what kind of metallurgical speak it is, but I'm pretty sure it's perlite, ferrite stages. 
No, it's austenite, that's it. Austenite's the really soft one because I'm I'm technically austenitizing this by controlling the um, cooling curve. I'm not cooling it fast, but like you do with quenching, cooling it really slowly, which will make it really, really soft. There's no martensite will form. So yeah, that'll be cool and it'll be a lot easier to forge in bevels and I, I might just give up and grind all this into a handle, which will probably be, be, be a bit easier than anything else I had planned. So yeah, other than that, I'm just gonna wait for this to do and then we'll forge in some bevels. So I've changed my mind a little bit on just the order I'm going to be doing things. Um, I found it really difficult to forge in the tang and everything and it was just, oh, I found it a little bit too much worth, uh, work than it was actually worth for me. So I'm just gonna take an angle grinder to it, cut out these rough shapes. This is just the kind of design I'm going for. That's just somewhere you could put your thumb. That's just part of the overall blade design. Then, after we've done that, we can start forging in the bevels and everything and start making everything trying to look good. So, that's all the shaping I pretty much want to do for the blade so far. Um, I've cleaned up the edge as well here just so it'll, it'll, it'll save me a bit of time later it's still a little bit like sanding work to do because there's still a couple of grooves but i can fix that later on or um the more likely thing i'll just put it down to the fact that it's forged and not bother doing it so you know adds the overall design and everything so i'm just trying to work out where i want my handles to finish and what i was thinking was because this is it started off kind of being a kitchen knife but just look at that edge thickness. That, that's not really kitchen knife. So it's kind of just a utility knife at this point. So what I like to do when measuring up for handles, just put it in your hand and just see where it roughly ends. Finish it about there. So I don't want to interfere with the blade too much. So I'll probably, I'll probably have start the handle on the bottom roughly there. And make it finish just before the chimping, I think. So probably round about, round about there, probably do. And just, just draw a line and mark. That's what I like to do anyway. I'm not really sure what's happened to the steel, but it might have age hardened or something like that because I found it really difficult to file. I don't know if it's just the thickness of it or. But it was really difficult to file. I, th I thought it hardened or something, and I didn't even quench it in anything. So I don't know if uh, when I was forging it was just a particularly cold day or something like that, and some of it hardened. But um, yeah. Anyway, now that I've got that done, you grab your center punch, move your scribe, check it on. I'm just using the anvil at the moment just because I want to get some use out of it. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with the anvil at the moment. Because I'm a little bit hesitant to start and forge on it. Just because it's not hardened and it's, you can scratch it with a centre punch. You can do all of that with it. So I'm just a little bit hesitant about what I want to do with it. Uh, before I figure out what I am going to do. So uh, I, I, I eyeball of all of my holes. I don't um, measure them really. It's no real point. Just try and find the centre roughly. And then get a nice firm bang out of it I'll probably go I'll probably only go for two pins this time because I normally go for three but I'll mix it up and go for two this time and I will put a lanyard hole in as well I think also a good idea is just to put it in your hand and check where the lanyard hole is roughly in terms of when it's going to be in your hand because I hate uh, what I used to do when I started making knives, uh, especially on, say, this one here, the lanyard just always gets in the way of your hand, and it it just bugs the hell out of me. So I've started uh, making sure that doesn't happen on all of my newer knives. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for centre punching. I'll bring over to the, drill, uh, the pillar drill. Just some mils, uh, we'll think we'll go 5 mil, 5 mil and 6 mil because I've got 5 mil stock and 6 mil tubing. So we'll do that. And then after that we'll just go back to sh shaping and 
probably beveling after that and then we'll do all the sanding and fun stuff like that. So, I'll drill the holes off camera and we'll move back on to shaping and everything. So after thinking about forging the bevels for a while, I've, I've been having a good old think about this. And after practicing on a bit of mild steel, I've decided that it is not as easy as it looks. And <laughs> I was expecting it to be slightly easier, to be fair. But, um, yeah, it apparently isn't that easy. So, um, in light of that, instead of trying to do it on this knife, which is something I put quite a bit of work into, I think I'm just going to grind the bevels in, just because I feel it would be a waste for this knife to try and forge the bevels in and fail, and well, inevitably I'd fail because I haven't done it but before, besides on that bit of mild steel, and um, I just don't want to waste the knife particularly, so I think I'll just uh, grind the bevels in which is probably a good idea, I'm just going to grab an angle grinder, do it like that, because you'll never guess, I don't have any belts on my belt grinder because I go through them so fast and don't buy any more. So, um, yeah, in light of that, I'm going to grind the bevels in, and um, the only annoying thing about that is because I forged this, well, because it is forged, and more importantly because I forged it, it's not straight, of course, the knife has a couple of bends in it, it's got fat bits, thin bits, all of that, but it's not too bad. So, uh, instead of doing my old trick where I put it on something and then take a drill bit and run it up there because it's not an equal fitness or a uniform uh, thickness, it um, could be like 5.3 mil or something like that in places. So, instead of doing that, I'll measure the width um, equal places with the caliper and just run up the center after coloring it in. So, that's the plan I'm going for anyway. We'll see how it works and um, after that we'll grind the bevels in. Yep, I'll do. It's about as precise as I'm ever going to get, I think. So, I've got that in, and now we'll just grind down to it, and... I've also got to decide where I want my plunge line to be, but normally I do it like this. Roughly there. I think I'll do it about there, my plunge line should be. Normally I'm a fan of just not having any plunge lines and making, like, cleaver-style ones, but... I think I've it's something I've got to get done eventually, have plunge lines, because... Uh, plunge lines are quite hard to do, so if you can get around it, I tend to, but it's time to bite the bullet and do it, I think, now, so time to do some grinding. Kind of a rough beveling in with the angle grinder to kind of get away most of the material. We're just going to go and trim it up on the belt grinder. This will just give us slightly cleaner lines, uh, slightly more kind of concentric um, grind lines as 
you know, when you're doing it with an angle grinder, you've got a wheel, so it will be slightly circular and uh, kind of odd just when you're grinding. You get little bits like that. It's not quite as controlled as when you're doing it on a grinder. So we're not going to be doing any kind of masterful grinding on this. It will just be more for truing it up and making sure everything's good. So we'll crack on with that. Also, I might just take a touch off the end, but I'll do that after I've done a bit of beveling just so I don't completely strip all of the abrasive off this. So we'll have a think about it and then we'll get on and do it. The bevel's pretty much cleaned up. I mean, there's a couple of imperfections here, but I'm not actually too worried about the overall fit and finish. It's more of a... This is more of a kind of getting used to forging and all of that, so I'm not overly worried about making it perfect first time. This is just kind of having a bit of a go at it. And there's less of a belly here now, so it doesn't ride up quite as much. It doesn't recurve anymore, which is nice. Because as I was grinding it, I just fixed it, you know, just ground away here a bit, and then I just had to regrind the the tip to its final edge thickness, which was pretty easy. I also just ground down where the handles are going to go, in case I do decide to epoxy it. I mean, I also just wanted to see, you know, what it looked like underneath. I mean, the overall forge look. I mean, that looks really cool. I really like the look of that. I could do that on the whole blade just to see if it did this kind of thing, but I'm going to leave it forged finish, I believe it is. Um, and yeah, this is this is pretty much how the blade is going to be. Besides all these weird marks, I'm going to get to probably sand them out. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to leave a kind of satin ground finish on there or a hand sanded finish. I don't know a lot of things about this knife, so. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going and see how it goes, but yeah, we're pretty much ready for heat treat now. Perfect. Right, we've got this bad boy out now. Now it's time to check all the important bits. Is it straight and is it hard? It is, ooh, a little bit of a warp there. Not too bad though, I can fix that by clamping. Now, let's get a file and we shall test the hardness of it all. And we're going off sound here, no Rockwell testers, so. Listen to that, good solid sound compared to if I can find any other bits of metal around here. This is just a normal bit of mild steel. The other sound. Here how it kind of bites in. Whereas with this one it's a... Uh, it's a definite... Definite skating action. Which is... Which is really good because I didn't want to have to heat treat this more than once. So. We've basically got the hard bit out of the way now. Making sure that... A big old blade like this gets hard because I only have a, a forge that is very weird when it comes to heating up large surfaces. You want to heat up a little bit? That's fine. My forge can definitely do that. It's why I like doing small knives because they're very easy to heat treat. Big ones though, slightly harder to do unless you have some kind of uh, like a kiln or PID controlled thing because otherwise you have to keep moving it and it's, it's very annoying to do. Um, and it requires you to kind of maintain your attention as well. So while I'm heat treating something, I can't be doing anything else, which is mildly annoying. But anyway, we've got it done. Now we can move on to getting it tempered. 
Uh, I can't remember what temper cycle exactly this steel is good for. I believe it was 180 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes and then two of those cycles. I think that was for a very hard blade. I think I'll go for a slightly softer one though because this is more of a hunting knife style thing so it might have to go through bone and things like that. I don't do any hunting but still just in case. Um, so I think we'll grind it, uh, grind it, I think we'll temper it for two one hour cycles at 180. That sounds, that sounds quite reasonable. So I think we'll be doing that. Um, and yeah, we'll just crack out and go do that. Guys, this is after heat treat and after temper. So we're all good and basically ready to go. We'll just clean up those grinds, make sure they're not covered in scale and, and bad stuff like that. Then we can clean up all the top surfaces and uh, we're basically going to leave the um, kind of scaly finish on there because we, we want to remind ourselves it's forged. You know, I could have very easily just done this with stock removal and that's not really what I wanted to show. You know, I wanted to I want to remember it's forged. So we'll leave that nice forged finish on there. We'll just take down some of the oil and that which is on there, which will be good. And um yeah, we'll just clean up all the spine, the belly, the um, inside bit of the handle. And um, then we'll have to get to putting its final edge thickness on and then sharpening it up. And then we have a good knife. And um, we're also going to chuck a handle on there as well. That's And that's going to be dead easy. So we'll crack on and do that. So we got all the surface finishing done that we wanted, the blade looks pretty good at the moment, I've just taped it up to protect what kind of finish there is there. As you can see that's all just metal around the back as well, that's all just bare steel, it looks quite nice, it's quite nicely sanded actually, I mean as soon as you start using the grinder everything just becomes easier and faster so you get less annoyed with it. And because of that, then you can get stuff done fast, you get less aggravated, you're like, oh, by the end of it, thank God I had a grinder. And because I've actually invested in it and started doing stuff with it, definitely would recommend getting some kind of small belt grinder. It just speeds up the whole process. And, you know, for like, I think, how much was mine? 25, I think mine was. So, for that kind of price, why wouldn't you? Is the kind of mentality I'm going for. But anyway... We're going to start thinking about the scales, I'm going to go have some look for some materials, then we'll have a look, see if it's plausible. Some of this thin um, synthetic stuff, so I'm thinking about using some of this. You know, I'll make a really thin knife and it'll, uh, it'll just look quite nice because it'll be all about the blade and all that. And Plus it doesn't need to be a particularly beefy handle to fit in your hand quite nicely. So um, I think I'm going to go with this and yeah, we'll just keep working it and see how it turns up, you know. Thank <laughs> you. 